Hi, welcome back to Cummins Repower Garage. I'm Brittany Barella here with Steve Sanders again. And today we're going to be talking about the electrical system that's provided with your crate engine purchase. So to start, we'll talk about the wiring harness that we provide as kind of your vehicle harness in the engine compartment. It starts with your ECM connector. So that's going to connect to the part of the ECM here that's covered up with this little cap. The other side of your ECM is going to connect in to your actual engine harness uh, connected to the engine. From there, you have your battery positive and negative connections to power the computer. Your fan control, high, low, and return. So right now, this product only uses that high wire. The low is not being used. It's for future crate engine products. And then you have your uh, grid heater solenoid control wires. Again, control and return. Those will connect to your grid heater solenoid supply and return, clearly labeled. Don't mess that up or you'll need a new solenoid. You also have your uh, battery connections. Your fusible link will connect to the battery side. Then you have power to your grid heater solenoid. And then again, connection from the grid heater solenoid to the actual grid heater on the engine. I guess I'll turn it over to Steve there to show that in the actual engine compartment of the Jeep. Yeah, so what we have here is a, a half Jeep display. Um, we've got an engine mocked up under the hood uh, with some of these wiring components uh, about where you would probably put them, especially in a Jeep. Uh, one thing to note about the grid heater solenoid, don't mount it to the engine, uh, just like the ECM. Follow the instructions in the installation guide uh, about mounting those uh, on body or on frame, uh, depending on the component. Um, we have the power um, and negative here, so the power and ground for the battery. Uh, we clearly state in that uh, installation guide, wire those straight to the battery, um, as well as this fusible link uh, Brittany talked about for the grid heater solenoid. You can see our signal wire coming over. Uh, as Brittany said, that uh, return goes to the negative and uh, the supply or signal wire goes to the positive. If you do get those backwards, you will damage that solenoid, so don't do that. Uh, on this side of the engine, there are also uh, two other things that actually connect directly to the engine harness. So if you look here at your crate, you'll see some zip tied uh, wire here with a, a lead. So you want to snap those zip ties and you've got a little bit of length here. And this will get you your signal wire for your water and fuel sensor located on the bottom of your supplied fuel filter. So you have a water separator in here and we have this sending unit in here that gives you a warning label if there is water detected in there that says you need to either change the filter or drain the filter. Uh, so that does connect to your engine side. What you'll also see in that installation guide is you don't want to mount your fuel filter on the hot side of the engine. So a jumper harness may be necessary. We do have an optional jumper harness available. Uh, you can search for it on parts.cummins.com. Uh, this particular one is long enough to get you over to that side of the engine. Uh, some people might choose to mount this down on the frame rail, uh, further back toward the tank. So these are varying lengths. It is a standard connector, so you can make your own if you'd prefer. So once you have that, there's one more plug that you will need to do um, from your actual engine harness, and that is for this MAF sensor. So the MAF sensor, once you have it in the MAF tube, odds are in your engine bay, you'll end up kind of in this vicinity. Uh, given the proximity to the compressor inlet. So you have a connector on here and this other coiled up wire zip tied on top with a red retaining clip is for your math plug. So that should be long enough to get you where your math needs to go and voila, clip that retainer in and you're good to go. So those are the two uh, things that you have to pull off of the engine side harness uh, to connect to the other supplied accessories we have. So your engine compartment harness has a bulkhead connector that's going to connect through your firewall to your uh, interior harness. Once you've got that connection made, there's a couple different pieces of this interior harness. So first of all, we have a service port. You can plug in a typical OBD reader. It's not gonna have full functionality of OBD2 because our engine is not OBD2 compliant, but you will be able to read fault codes through that connector. 
another way you can read fault codes is through your Murphy gauge. There is a plug for that. And so this will read you engine vitals, uh, engine speed, coolant temperature, things like that, as well as those fault codes with an amber and stop engine uh, warning lamps on that. Along with those warning lamps, we also provide wiring to wire additional lamps in. You can make your factory dash work or you can wire those in separately. There is one for a stop engine lamp, which is typically red, a amber warning lamp, which is more for just a service event type of things. There's a mill lamp wire that again is not used on this engine because it's not OBD2 compliant, but for future versions of the crate engine that could be turned on. And then you'll have a wait to start lamp, which is for your grid heater. So that is based on coolant temperature. If your coolant temperature is too low, uh, we'll, we'll tell the grid heater to turn on and you'll wanna wait to start your engine until it heats up the air in your intake and that ranges anywhere between 10 and 30 seconds. Last wire on here is your key switch, so you'll wire that into your ignition in order for the engine to start. Last piece of your in-cab wiring harness is your accelerator pedal connection to use with your provided accelerator pedal. Again, mount that kind of where your stock pedal would have been in the vehicle. All right, guys, we've turned our Jeep display around to give you a, a bit more of an in-depth look at the interior side of our harness. So starting here with the bulkhead fitting, uh, this connector goes through a two inch hole. So for you folks doing a TJ conversion, there's conveniently a two inch hole already in your firewall, but if not, easy to knock out. Uh, this plugs into the under uh, hood portion of our harness uh, and gets the two talking together without having to feed a bunch of wires through the firewall through a rubber grommet that leaks or you run the risk of actually uh, tearing the shielding on your wire. So we like that as a nice little feature here. Uh, over here is the service port Brittany was talking about. So we are broadcasting J1939 and J1979 uh, through this, as well as a, a positive and negative for any of those OBD devices that might need some power when they're plugged into this. Uh, the same messages are being broadcast up here through our Murphy gauge uh, to give you your amber light, uh, your stop engine light, and any of those engine vitals, uh, like Brittany said, for RPM, coolant temp, uh, all this stuff that might not work on your original dash anymore, you've at least got it here. The one thing that we don't have here that is in our pile of indicator light wires is the wait to start lamp. So if you don't wire any of these other indicator lamps and you just want to go by that, the one you still should wire is your wait to start so you can understand if that grid heater is needing to cycle and when it's done. Um, key switch signal. So this needs to go to your ignition switch, but you need to verify that you're not losing 12 volts uh, to this fuse link while you're cranking. Uh, we've had a few customers have that problem. Uh, we had that problem once uh, and we were cranking and cranking and we thought maybe we have a fuel priming issue, but it just turned out that we had lost our 12 volts to our key switch signal while we were in the crank position on our ignition switch. So check that uh, as a, a little tip if you're having problems getting your engine to fire for the first time. So lastly, on the interior harness, we have the throttle pedal that we provide. Uh, there are a couple safety features that are really worth noting in the installation guide when you're uh, determining where to place this, how to use it. Uh, you really want to mimic as closely as possible the OEM pedal installation. So typically you'd have a brake pedal somewhere out in front of the plane of this pedal, maybe a clutch pedal over here. And the reason you really want to set that back and make sure it's not on the same plane is if you're in a, 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 an emergency situation where you got to slam on the brakes, you don't want to accidentally fat foot it and hit the throttle pedal and rear end the person in front of you. So really try to pay attention to that OEM installation and follow that as closely as possible. The second safety feature on that is this six pin wiring connector. So we provide a generous lead for that because we're trying to do a one size fits most application here. Um, we ask that you don't cut that wire, you don't trim it, you don't shorten it, you coil it up if you have excess length. And the reason for that is you have two signal wires. Uh, those signal wires should be broadcasting the same thing. If there's a discrepancy between the two, it will zero out the throttle pedal signal to keep you from an unintentional acceleration or any other problem that might arise. So again, don't cut those, don't shorten those. These are all speaking on that J1939 and J1979 uh, CAN network. So if you're looking for throttle position for some other device, get it from somewhere else on our wiring harness. Uh, you, we have several points you can pick that up without actually cutting into the harness. Uh, if you want to make sure that all those messages are being broadcast correctly, uh, you have two terminating resistors on that wiring harness. One is near the Murphy gauge. You'll see a little gray plug. Uh, 
Uh, the other is on the opposite end near the ECM, another gray plug. Uh, those aren't necessarily places we ask that you tee into, but don't take out those terminating resistors because they help complete that circuit. So that wraps up our electrical section about your R2.8 crate engine. Definitely, definitely, definitely read your installation guide. There's a lot more details in there that we didn't cover today. There's a diagram about grounding your engine and ECM. If you go to Cummins, or if you go to quickserve.cummins.com, there's a full wiring schematic for everything that we provide in the kit. And if you go to CumminsRepower.com, of course, you'll have all your general information about the R2.8. See you next time on Cummins Repower Garage. Thanks.